but you know, we're getting hungry. I could smell things. I could smell Leslie and Kevin's kitchen there. Okay. So welcome, Leslie Leopardi, and she is a certified detoxification specialist and owner of Botox and Kevin Kaiser. Am I pronouncing that right? Yes, you are. Just like the role. Okay. They were <laughs> here with us a few months ago and were such a hit. They're quite a duo here in the kitchen. So um, just a reminder that if you would turn off, put everything on mute while they're cooking. And then if you have something that you want a question in the chat room, and I'm sure there'll be time at the end for chatting and questions also. And by the way, this is being recorded. So tomorrow you'll get an email from me and it will have recipe. It will have a link to the recording that you can watch and share and anything else that comes up tonight that we'll put in. So on that note, I will hand it over to the cooking duo, Leslie and Kevin. Wonderful. Thanks again, Sally, so much um, for welcoming us back. I really appreciate how Sally has grown Plant Based Pittsburgh into the community that it is today. Another really big thank you to Brittany Giroudi for helping to set this up and for you know, working with us on the technical side. Much appreciated. We are so very excited to be here with you today to share um, an SOS free rice and bean bake. So this recipe actually comes from, uh, before I get started, I'm sorry. Yeah, Leslie Leopardi, Kevin Kaiser, Sally did a wonderful job uh, introducing us. I don't have to do that again. So this recipe comes from the Vegan on the Cheap book uh, by Robin Robertson. By no means is this cookbook an SOS free book. But the beauty of tonight is we're gonna show you really easy ways to tweak recipes, some of your favorite recipes at home, so you can enjoy them, a healthier version of them. So tonight, we're gonna to work our SOS free magic for you. First thing is first, uh, this recipe features a homemade salsa that we're gonna whip up for you tonight. And it also features none other than Brittany Giroudi's nacho cheese sauce. You can find that on her YouTube channel, The Giroudi Family. Um, we really love using this cheese sauce. It is phenomenal, it's so versatile. So let's get into it. To start off with tonight, we had already pre-prepped uh, one cup of instant brown rice. Now, um, I will definitely send Sally uh, the recipe, the directions, so you will have everything that you need to follow along and make this at home. So we have our one cup of instant brown rice. We're gonna set that off to the side until we're ready to use it. First thing is first, we're going to prepare our salsa. So we have our magic bullet here. It's, it's perfect for making this salsa. Uh, this recipe calls for two cups. This is the perfect size for it. So in our salsa, uh, we have all of our ingredients here and we're going to add the tomatoes in near the very end. So they're closest to the blade. The juice from those tomatoes will help everything blend really well. So first we're gonna add one diced bell pepper, one diced jalapeno, and about half of an ear of corn. I got some really great fresh corn from the store today, and we love making this with fresh corn. The sweetness of that corn is bar none. You really can't get that same sweet flavor from frozen corn. But if you only have frozen corn, that's okay. You can still make do. Uh, next we're adding a half of a red onion diced. And now we're adding two chopped Roma tomatoes, half teaspoon of minced garlic. Now, this garlic that we're using is actually roasted garlic. You can use plain if you want, but we found this at the store. This roasted garlic here is absolutely phenomenal. It just gives a nice roasted flavor to whatever you're using. And with this rice and bean bake, the more flavors, the better. All right, Roma tomatoes, our minced garlic. We have a small handful of cilantro, and then we have just a, a capful each of lemon and lime juice. And then to top it off, we always add whatever seasonings you like. In here, we have 
a trio of seasonings, and all of these are SOS free. So here we have a 21 seasoning salute. We get this from Trader Joe's. Oh yeah, Sally, absolutely. This stuff is incredible. Uh, next we have some table tasty. I got this on Amazon a few years ago. This has uh, some nutritional yeast that will help give things a slightly nutty, cheesy flavor. And then lastly in our salsa, we're adding some wawa chihuahua. This, I actually got a giant eagle and it is uh, even marked as no salt or sugar. Phenomenal. Uh, heavy on chili powder, um, just really great, great flavor. So thank you, Kevin. We're going to give us a whirl. It's going to get a little loud, so you might want to turn your mics down if possible. So the thing about this salsa, it's a very basic salsa recipe. You can tweak this recipe however you want. Add whatever seasonings you want. If you want it to be, um, you know, a little heavier on cilantro, feel free. I'm not going to dump this on the laptop. That would be bad. Uh, but we have our salsa ready here. We're going to set this off to the side until we're ready for this. Next, we're going to whip up. Brittany's nacho cheese sauce. So same thing, we're gonna use the magic bullet, but this time, because the recipe is fairly small, this little tiny magic bullet cup, I don't know if you can see this back there, um, this is the perfect size for whipping up one batch of this cheese sauce. So to make this amazingly smoky, creamy, delicious cheese sauce, uh, we're gonna start by adding in our dry ingredients. Um, in this little, uh, little container here, we have three tablespoons of nutritional yeast, two teaspoons of smoked paprika, and a half teaspoon each of garlic and onion powder. So kind of the same thing that we did with the salsa, we want to add um, our wet ingredients near the end, closer to the blade to keep things moving. This is going to be a thicker sauce. Um, you might need to add just a, a bit of water as needed. Uh, next, we will add in our soaked raw cashews. So this is just a half cup of raw cashews. We have had soaking in some spring water for a couple hours. You don't need to soak them that long, um, you know, at least 15, 20 minutes, just so they blend a little bit easier. Uh, next, we'll add in uh, some roasted red pepper. This is about one, one and a half pieces, a large piece of a roasted red pepper. Last but not least, we'll add in a quarter cup of water. In here, we have dissolved a teaspoon of miso, a chickpea miso, and one teaspoon of rice vinegar. So once we have all of our ingredients here, same thing, watch your ears, we'll whip this up, and then you get to see this phenomenal cheese sauce. Perfect. So this sauce, like I said, is, is really, really thick. You can already see how it clings to the blade. Um, it's just, yes. I guys, guys, I really wish you could smell it. It's smoky from that smoked paprika. Uh, the cashews make it really creamy. Uh, yeah, he's got the right idea. Um, this sauce is so versatile. You could use it on nachos. Those we use it in the rice and bean bake. You could put it on burritos, anything. Really get creative with this. And if you happen to have a Vitamix, this will get it super smooth. The consistency would be amazing. All right. A quick question from um, Kelly wants to know if you can use white miso instead of chickpea. Absolutely, yes. Um, the only reason that I specifically use chickpea miso is I have a, a slight soy sensitivity. So I tend to stay away from products that contain soy. 
as much as possible, um, but absolutely use whatever miso you have on hand. Great question. So um, now we're going to put our cheese sauce aside until we're ready to use it. Now we're going to bring out the electric wok. If you tuned into our last cooking demo, we used this electric wok. We use this side all the time. Cooks evenly, just it's a phenomenal surface to cook on. All righty, so first things first, we're going to water saute our onions and garlic. Great thing about water sauteing, you're saving yourself that unnecessary oil, the fat, and uh, you really don't even miss it. You cannot tell a difference. Uh, so here we are going to water saute uh, one diced onion and about a half tablespoon of minced garlic. And we're going to allow this to cook until the onions are soft and you can start to smell the garlic. So here we have a knob on the back of the wok and you can twist it and, and turn the knob to whatever temperature you need it on. We typically, thank you, we typically cook our, ours at 350. So we have the garlic heating up in here. So to cut down on time, you can always get pre-chopped vegetables. You can absolutely chop yours at home if you have the time, if you have the desire to. If not, getting your pre-chopped vegetables is a great way to save on time. And really, if that means the difference between eating out or eating at home, definitely get your chopped vegetables. All right, so this is gonna take about a minute or so until those onions are softer um, and we can start to really smell that garlic. At that point, we're going to add two diced bell peppers and uh, some corn. So if you guys have any questions in the meantime, please feel free. We will have some downtime while things cook. Somebody else asked is, um, the three spices that you use, that you didn't have them, do you recommend any substitute, any other ones, or somebody else here in the Yes, yes. absolutely, great question. So there are so many options nowadays. Uh, we even have some more on hand, uh, two that you can get at Giant Eagle by the Simply Organic brand, uh, even old salt-free on the top. Um, here is a spicy blend. They have a salt-free savory blend and uh, Bragg's. Uh, you know, Bragg's carries great products, but this, this in particular has a really strong rosemary flavor. It is great. Uh, you don't miss the salt in these. That's the beautiful thing about using herbs. What, what was the name of the Bragg's again? I, I didn't see, it was kind of quick. Yeah, not a problem. It is just a Bragg. Organic sprinkle. Okay, thank you. Uh, of course, the 24 herbs and spices. Okay. Really phenomenal. Okay, excellent. So uh, now Kevin is adding in some seasoning. Every time we add in a new ingredient or a new layer of ingredients, we're going to add some seasonings here just so we get an even coating. Uh, really important when you're cooking. You don't want to get pockets of too much spice. You don't want to get pockets of no spice. So this will definitely help to make sure that everything is evenly coated. All right, so now uh, we're ready for our uh, diced peppers. These are about two peppers in here. We love the rainbow bell peppers. Great color, great flavor. Now, as you cook, the water from the vegetables will start to uh, you know, cook down. As you need more water, here's a perfect time to start using your vegetable stock. So we have one cup of vegetable stock measured out here. And Kevin will just use little tiny bits of that vegetable stock just to prevent sticking. But that way you're starting to cook in the flavor of the vegetable stock into the uh, veggies. Now, one thing about vegetable stock, if, if I'm sure any of you are familiar with, 
veggie stock and stock in general is always super, super high in sodium. Well, not anymore. If you have a fresh thyme near your area or you know, something similar, uh, there is a Kitchen Basics brand that is unsalted. Great flavor, absolutely no salt. There is 7% sodium and it's natural from the vegetables. So this is a really great um, alternative. Or if you want, you can always make your own broth at home. If you have a lot of uh, produce ends, you can always boil those down and make your own broth. So Kevin is going to continue cooking down the uh, peppers and the corn. Uh, we're going to add in the rest of the ear of corn that we used uh, from this morning. So the goal here at this stage is to allow the vegetables to really cook down and let them release their natural water. Uh, we want the peppers to be softer. We want the onions to be translucent. So again, some more downtime. If anyone has any other questions, please keep them coming. It is, it's smelling incredible. So the garlic and onion is there. Season. Everyone take a deep breath through the nostrils and smell it. I'm trying to. Oh, yes. It's, it's really phenomenal, guys. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So we're adding more 21 seasonings here. Yes, yeah, Sally, this is definitely one of our favorites. Oh, well, I use it all the time. Yeah. What do you use it on? I made pizza tonight, put on pizza. I put in soups. I put it in. I don't know what I don't put it in. I don't put it in oatmeal. I don't do that. But. <laughs> Wow. So, oh, spaghetti sauce the other night. Put it in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that sounds good. On the pizza, though. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. I'm trying that. <laughs> I know Brittany uses it, too, because she's so, yeah. Absolutely. So uh, just a little bit longer. There is a lot of water that's cooking off of these. We're going to allow that to evaporate. Um, the peppers are starting to cook down, but they're still looking a bit on the raw side. We want to make sure that those peppers are soft. Um, this whole mixture will have to bake in the oven a little bit longer, um, but we want the majority of the cooking to be done in this step. So, uh, for anyone that is not familiar, I know that I did a bit of a shout out last, uh, last time, but while we have some downtime, I uh, wanted to uh, take a bit of a moment to talk about Whole Talks in case any of you are interested or have any questions. So, uh, I am the founder of Whole Talks, where we take a holistic approach to detoxification. We really take time to, to dive into um, imbalances in the body where we can correct health ailments. I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, single sessions, month-long, two-month-long programs, you name it. We really dive into how the body works and how we can especially use food to heal the body. Now, Sally has a really amazing story of how plant-based eating and, and this whole lifestyle can turn around your health. Um, Sally, I'm sure most of the people here are familiar with your story, but maybe if you don't mind sharing a bit. I don't mind sharing at what at all, but before I do, I have a question from somebody here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why do you use a wok as opposed to a pan on the, on the stove top? You can, uh, you absolutely can use a pan. Um, for the next step that we're about to do, we're gonna be adding um, a cup of uh, the, the broth along with the rice and then also beans as well. So it's just a lot of stuff to be all in one, one pan. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Pan that we, yes. uh, we have used, uh, she's about to grab a pan that we've used before. Um, it just is a little clunky. Um, this is just nice and easy, it's got the handles. 
It's got the handles, um, but you could absolutely use something that so can accomplish the same, the yeah. same thing. Absolutely. Good. Good. It's really well. We're just super partial to the electric walk. Yeah, I've never used an electric walk. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. For those that don't fabulous. know, I'm a late stage cancer survivor. But come to our next one, March 10th. I'm going to be leading the. Um, event for plant-based Pittsburgh or the presentation. So you can hear more from me March 10th. We're going to do something on mindfulness and meditation and changing habits. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Sally. So March 10th, that's really exciting. Uh, the, the wonders of plant-based eating never fail to amaze. And in every is. is so unique and so amazing. And every one of those stories will give you goosebumps. Uh, so now we're at a point here where we're going to add the rest of that one cup of vegetable broth. And we are going to add the instant rice that we cooked earlier. And then once we have all of that mixed in well, again, always adding seasonings as you go, we will add in two cans of uh, rin uh, rinsed and drained black beans. Now, as far as our beans go, uh, you have a few different options. Uh, you can always get dried beans and soak them overnight, cook them in the instant pot or on the stove top. If you don't wanna go that route, you are always welcome to get your canned beans. But again, just like your vegetable stalks, um, they tend to be really high in sodium, even after you rinse and drain them. However, there are uh, reduced sodium black beans, and uh, even Walmart will carry no salt added black beans. So we are getting a lot more options to help encourage healthier lifestyles. And honestly, the, the price difference between these is pretty negligible. So it's not like you're going to be spending two or three times the amount for healthier versions. All right, so at this point, we have added the vegetable stock, uh, our rice, and the two cans of black beans. Uh, there is a good deal of liquid in the bottom of the wok, so we're going to allow this to cook down, and really, we want the majority of this liquid to evaporate. Uh, at the point where there's only a slight amount of moisture and it's more thick, that's when we will remove it from the heat and we'll move on to the next step. So while this cooks, we yet again have a bit more downtime. Are there any other questions? Somebody wants to know um, if you use it, the walk for anything else? Yes, Oops. absolutely. Uh, so with our last cooking demonstration, we made a uh, vegetable and rice mixture that we stuffed into the acorn squash. Uh, so really any kind of rice and vegetable mixture, you could make stir fries in here. Um, I don't see why you couldn't even make like small batches of soup. I may not necessarily recommend that, but uh, it lends itself perfectly for stir fries and these kinds of mixtures. Sort of like tofu, you could make scrambled tofu in the Yeah, I mean, the, the nice thing is, uh, is like, it's essentially like a, a pan, like what Leslie was showing you for on the stove, um, just a little bit bigger, deeper. Um, things like rice, it's a little bit easier. It doesn't stick as much like a nonstick pan, but all your uh, heat and everything is just contained right here in this bowl. The, it, it heats everything nice and evenly all around. Um, us ourselves here have a flame burner. Um, I personally love using a flame burner, but uh, I will admit it, it's not as even. Um, so this just is uh, what I find a, a nice, uh, convenient way to cook most things, actually. Um, there's all sorts of recipes out there. But pretty much anything that you would do in a pan or a skillet, you could do in the wok. <laughs> So we still have probably another minute or, or two until the rest of this moisture cooks down. So please. 
I still think you two should have your own cooking channel. It's there. We love it. Yeah, we've been talking about a lot of opportunities, you know, maybe some YouTube videos. Honestly, yeah. this channel is so much fun. She puts out great recipes that follow a whole food plant-based diet. Um, I've tried her shamrock shake before. Guys, you have to try the shamrock shake. So, yeah, a lot of people have this misconception that healthy eating has to be boring. Well, we're here to totally bust that myth. Uh, and honestly, this recipe, no salt, no oil, no sugar, but the spices in here, the, the flavors from the smoked paprika, everything, you don't miss the salt. It's just the natural flavors of the food come out and your, your palate begins to appreciate food as it is. Wow. Another agree, question sir. about the wok. Is oh, the before. inside of the wok nonstick? Yes, yes it is. Uh, especially when it comes to an electric wok, I, I, as you can see, I'm using a wooden uh, spoon. Um, don't use anything metal. Uh, it can, of course, scratch on the inside. So you're gonna wanna use like silicone-based uh, silverware or a wooden spatula of some sort, uh, just nothing of metal. You can get these on Amazon, right? Yeah, Amazon. yeah, absolutely. I'm sure like Amazon, uh, Target, I'm sure. Bed Bath & Beyond. Bed Bath & Beyond. Absolutely. Uh, this one in particular was actually a gift, uh, one of my favorite cooking uh, pieces uh, for a gift. So I'm not sure where this particular one came from. Well, we're almost there. Folks. We are just about there. Just about there. So I just want you to know that you two got the endorsement of Brittany to start a YouTube channel. OK. She welcomes right the competition. OK, cook off. Right on. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. Always can use more people doing it. So I'd be happy right. to, you guys would be great. Oh, Good awesome. Yeah. You know, Brittany, that's so exciting. I had a YouTube channel a couple of years ago and, and, you know, life gets busy, but, you know, watching your channel has really inspired me and, and got us both thinking about getting back on camera because you're right. There are so many things, so many great things that we can share with each other. Uh, just recently, someone had uh, taken our stuffed acorn squash recipe and, and tweaked it. They made some leftovers. Uh, the woman even said that her husband devoured leftovers before she had a chance to get to them. Uh, but there's another recipe that came from ours. And so this is where the real fun begins. We get to learn from each other and just build from there. Excellent. So at this point, uh, the moisture has evaporated. Uh, Kevin has uh, removed the rock from the heat. And now we are going to stir in the two cups of salsa that we made earlier. Now it's okay if this mixture seems a little bit soupy or, or a bit loose right now because it will be cooking in the oven for another 20 minutes or so. Once this is well mixed, we're going to transfer this mixture to a glass nine by 13 pan. That is very hot. It was on the oven. So even though this is an SOS free dish, there's no oil in here. The recipe does call to lightly grease the pan. We don't, and it doesn't stick. The most that will happen is with the cheese sauce, there might be a tiny bit that is a little bit crusty on the top, but that's what you want, that golden brown top. Uh, but other than that, the pan is a cinch to clean. You don't have to worry about even adding oil to grease your pan. All right, teamwork. Right. So now we have uh, rice and beans in here. Next, we're going to add in the cheese sauce and just give that a good mix.
I still can't get over this cheese sauce. Mix that in. And we have the oven preheated to 400 degrees. We will put this in the oven for 20 minutes. At that point, we'll take it out, give it a quick stir, and uh, we typically put it in for another five minutes just to allow that top to get golden brown. So at that point, we have a lot of time to spare. Uh, we are more than happy to answer any questions, uh, talk about anything that is on your guys' minds. Any questions? Absolutely. So I'm going to bring this over for you folks just so you can see it before it goes into the oven. You get all the all the colors in here. You get the corn. It's so hard to see, guys. Wow. You know, corn, uh, the peppers, just all the colors in here. I can't wait. If you don't mind. Minutes. Great. So we have that in the oven for 20 minutes and now we wait. So guys, um, what do you like to do SOS free at home? Does anyone have a favorite recipe? Has anyone tried SOS free cooking before? Yeah, I'm sure a lot of these people that are on board with SOS free. Um, yeah, so if you wanna just write in the chat room or um, can you make the cheese sauce without cashews? I wanna answer that yes, because I always use white beans. Oh, that's phenomenal. White beans, um, there are also a lot of recipes that call for boiling potatoes, carrots and onions together. Uh, you drain those and then you would blend that with nutritional yeast, your seasonings, and it make a fabulous cheesy sauce. So you can absolutely make a cheese sauce without nuts. For sure. Yeah, yeah. And squash, I don't know if you said that, but I've made Ooh. it with squash, a butternut squash cheesy sauce. No. Yes. <laughs> okay, well then that, that might be like next on our list. Hey, Leslie. Yes. Uh, I bet you you could make my cacciatore that is, that is SOS free too. Absolutely, you could. So sure. that, that's something that Kevin and you can try or come over sure. and make it together, whatever. But For another sure. thing, while I make your vegetable soup, mm -hmm. that is SOS too. Nice. Yeah, actually, a great, great thing to bring up, Mom. Thanks. Uh, my mom makes this fabulous vegetable soup, guys. There's typically anywhere between 12 to 15 different vegetables. Uh, really, whatever you have in the fridge, you can water saute all your vegetables, throw in some unsalted vegetable stock, um, tomato base, whatever you want. Uh, but that is a phenomenal idea. Absolutely no salt, no sugar. You just don't need it. So actually my, my initial introduction into the SOS free lifestyle was a, uh, a challenge or a program that came out several years ago by a YouTuber named High Carb Hannah. And it is her lean and clean program. And it, it was a, a challenge for I believe a month to eat SOS free. I cooked everything from potato wedges. I made my own SOS free ketchup at home. Uh, banana and ice cream was huge for breakfast. You can throw in a little bit of spinach in there to give it a beautiful mint green color. You're getting your dark leafy greens, your calcium in there. Um, all amazing ways to get in all your nutrients. And a great way, I'm, I'm sure any of you that are following this lifestyle or trying to incorporate SOS free eating as much as possible, you already know of the health benefits. During that month, I lost weight, my skin cleared up, I was sleeping better, I was clear mentally, 
it is so amazing what happens in the body when we get the obstructions out of the way. And what better way to do that than food? No, he doesn't like to eat. Yeah, I'll put some people are putting a couple, you know, some ideas what they do. Um, Marsha put in a bean salad. I'll, I'll when I send your email, any suggestions here, I'll add it to the email, the, what they've written. And was it Donna who said they love your, yes, Donna did, your acorn squash dish with tahini. It, it will work with any sauce. Yes, that, that was, I know Linda said she's made, it was, that was a real keeper. It was, I actually got a couple emails on that recipe after our last demo. And it's so phenomenal to get that feedback. We really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Personal favorites. Yeah. yeah. For both sets of our parents, everyone has liked it. It's just, it's great. Okay, so Kelly said, I'm new here. Where could I find that recipe? Well, I'll send it out with, and <laughs> our, I'll dig it up and send it out to, with this new one. Cause it really is, it's a great recipe. That's great, thanks. Linda, you asked a question about, um, I forget, it's back here. How easy or difficult to convert? Is that, I wasn't sure what you mean by that. You wanna unmute or not? I meant when you have old family favorites from the good old days, the bad old days. Yeah. Uh, I find desserts are, are tricky to convert, but what about what kind of dishes lend themselves to converting to SOS? Great question. Uh, I would say desserts will be, depending on the dessert, that would be a lot more difficult because a lot of them will call for some kind of added sugar, um, unless you're going with um, things that use um, overripe bananas, uh, berries, maybe some of your um, gourmet raw dishes that are more nut and seed based. Uh, with that said, I find personally that more savory dishes really lend themselves well to converting to SOS free. So we know automatically that anytime they call for oil to saute, we're going to water saute. Simplest change that we can make and we're, we're saving ourselves so much, you know, so much <laughs> junk, right? Um, as far as um, salt, we have things like uh, miso that give that sodium, it gives that salty flavor and just a little bit of sodium to help bring out everything's natural flavors, but it's not like adding your table salt. Um, and as far as sugar goes, there are plenty of things that we can use like overripe bananas, or if we're using more savory dishes, chances are we may not even need sugar to begin with. Um, so I've found that things like this dish, uh, pastas, bean burgers, you name it, all of those things, we can easily cut out the SOS. Another big one uh, to chime in is the, um, the seasonings. Uh, I mean, most of your mixed seasonings typically will have the salt and, you know, even sugar things in them. But uh, the biggest key is finding the, the salt-free uh, seasonings, like several of the ones that we've uh, mentioned. Uh, those, they're, they're just as good. Um, it's nice to you know, go through, find some of your personal favorites. They're so generically uh, able to be used across the board. You can throw them in any of your personal recipes. You know, um, it really allows you to get creative and tweak the recipe to, to be what you like. So. Thank you, that's good advice, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, absolutely. So uh, Kevin brought up a really great point. Just to save on time, um, in case we do run out of questions, we did uh, make a batch of this earlier today, and we have a little uh, dish of it heating up in the oven with ours uh, here as well, just so you guys get to see the finished product. Um, so with that said, happy to take more questions, if there are any. Um, I was just going to reply to you, Beth, because you say you water saute and you're using stainless steel and it tends to stick. I use stainless steel and, and I may be 
you need more water because I it doesn't stick for me. I um, I like stainless steel. I like the way it it heats. Same, but, same. That that's typically been my experience. Whenever uh, things do start to stick, it just needs a bit more water. Give it a good stir, and if anything. When you do add some water, it will dissolve the caramelization that happened from the burning. And it's just going to bring out the, the vegetables and natural sugars and make everything a bit sweeter. So um, not a bad thing. Just add a bit more water. <laughs> Alrighty, folks. So um, if there are any other questions, please feel free. Um, otherwise, I am more than happy to pull our smaller dish out of the oven. It's been in there for about 10 minutes now. It's already cooked. All we really needed to do was heat it through and lightly brown the top. So if uh, there's nothing else, you know, I don't want to hold anyone up for the night. Right now, I don't see any more questions. Okay. I do have another question. Um, I had asked your mom <laughs> about the chickpea uh, miso, and she had said she got it on Amazon. So um, I'm not finding it on there. Is there someplace local you can get it in a store? Absolutely. So I tend to get the chickpea miso from Naturally Sorgles. If you're in the Cranberry oh, okay. area, uh, Naturally Sorgles really cute store with a lot of alternative products. Oh yeah, I've, I've been yeah, Actually, there. let me get it out of the fridge. I'll show you. Because Whole Foods didn't have it and I didn't know where else to yeah. look. It's the same brand as the, it's the red miso and the other misos that you'll find in the stores. Okay. I found that uh, Naturally Sorgles will carry the chicken. Oh, super. Yeah. That's a good excuse for me to go there. <laughs> Honestly, I'm looking for any excuse to go there. They have some yeah. products there. They do. Okay, thank you. In Trader Joe's. In Trader Joe's, huh? Actually, we're in we're in for a, another Trader Joe's run soon. Mm. We go there. We typically get two to three of the 21 seasonings. We don't really live that close to Trader Joe's, so when we go, we stock up because, like, like, we use that 21 seasoning salute for everything. Everything. Every day, we're using it. So without any further ado, I'm going to pull out a little dish here. Well, our larger container continues to cook. I'm going to do the honors. Kevin's going to sprinkle some freshly chopped uh, cilantro on top, a beautiful garnish. And a fresh sprig of cilantro. He is, after all, the kitchen magician. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And if you wouldn't mind, I'm actually going to have you tilt, tilt the, the screen down just a bit. So hopefully we get a better shot. All righty, folks. So here, if you can see, we have the corn, green and red bell peppers in here, rice and beans. This thickened up beautifully. Thank you. So this, this mixture, it thickens up the rice and beans, um, helps soak up any leftover moisture. And uh, you can not grab that spoon. Hey, Kevin. I just drove yes. on the shirt. <laughs> Herb said he just drooled on his shirt. Right. Uh, you know, Herb doesn't do spicy, but you know, uh, you should drop some of that off to our house for me to try. Uh, we we absolutely will because we have a whole nother pan. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah, we gotta. We'll, we'll be sharing. That's for sure. And this, this is well, while you're to... rotating around the area, um, <laughs> going by, huh? Everyone that wants some, just raise your hand. Okay. Yay! <laughs> no, but Ke uh, Leslie and Kevin, um, because you know, like some people can't do the spicy stuff like Herb, mm -hmm. so. We wouldn't put what the Sorrento in the jalapeno, right? Right, 
Absolutely. Now, the spices, Kevin, you put in there, are they are they spicy, spicy? Because you know herb doesn't do spice. Correct. Uh, so uh, there's actually very hardly, if any, uh, actual spiciness in with this. Uh, even using the jalapeno, absolutely. If you wanted to cut that out of your um, uh, the salsa, you can. Uh, the salsa is pretty basic, so whatever you're you want to put in it, but um, uh, this ends up getting so mild, especially as it cooks. Uh, you, there's no bite to it. Uh, to be honest, I'm not a spicy person myself, um, so I tend to go really light on those types of spices. But um, uh, this, even with like some of the spicy spice that I uh, put in here, is the Wawa Chihuahua. Um, but uh, again, it's so minimal, especially if you go light on it, like I myself do. That's what you put on your French fries, right, Les? This is one of the seasonings, yes. Yeah. I've, I've found that uh, from personal experience, a lot of the really, really spicy seasonings tend to be incredibly high in salt. It is that added salt that really gives you that burn. Um, so with that said, even though the Wawa Chihuahua is the majority of a chili powder, really, because there's no added salt in here, the spice level is surprisingly really mild. And the, the Roma tomatoes um, really help make everything more mild. Yeah. Okay, so are you guys just going to eat it like that? Or are you going to like put it over spaghetti? Or is it going to be like a chip type thing? Like you can like a dip? Yeah, great question. You can eat this by itself. Um, you can put this on uh, homemade chips if you want. You can put it in a burrito. Um, cool. The sky's the limit at this point. Um, this is a, a really great base. Um, so I just took a bite. The, uh, it's thick, it's warm, it's comforting. Honestly, it's a perfect dish for the cooler months. Um, I know that we're potentially getting into spring. I know it was gorgeous today, but we still have a few cold days ahead of us. So uh, a really nice uh, like casserole in essence like this is perfect. Uh, but it has a great smoky flavor from that paprika and the roasted red peppers. Um, nothing is overwhelming in here. All the flavors just mesh beautifully. Yeah. So Linda says, can we substitute quinoa? I don't see why not. Oh, yeah. I don't see why not. Um, even if you wanted to, you could potentially do half and half, half brown rice and half quinoa. Um, that could give you some interesting textures. You'll have slightly bigger, um, chewier bits with the rice, um, something smaller with an even bigger protein punch. Perfect. That's a great idea. Wow. Okay, guys. Lots of people are writing yum, yum, yum. Okay. <laughs> You're getting right on. Very. <laughs> uh, you just need disappointed. To, you just need to figure out what you're making for your next show. <laughs> on that, if if anyone has any suggestions, recommendations, requests, please let us know. Um, honestly, Kevin has some really great experience in the kitchen um, from from you know previous jobs, maybe a past life as a chef <laughs> potentially. Um, so it's, it's always fun getting in the kitchen with him um, because we really get to experiment with different foods, different seasonings. Um, and to be honest, if you don't mind, Kevin doesn't come from this lifestyle. Uh, this is very new to him as of the last year. And he has, um, you know, experienced some health benefits himself. And uh, I really personally appreciate how much he has um, very willingly come into this lifestyle. Um, so it's always really exciting getting to share recipes with his family. I've been sharing things with my family for a while, um, but it's really great to see some new faces trying new food in that look of shock of, oh wait, I didn't realize this is plant-based. Oh wait, there's no salt, oil, or sugar in this. You must be kidding. No, we're not. <laughs> so. Uh, it's, it's really fun, guys. Have fun with it. Thank you. So we did have a request from Jenny. She says, oh, we have two requests here. One person wants breakfast options. The other one wants desserts. 
Okay. Oh, I knew that one was coming too. All right. Very cool. We were actually talking about a possible dessert to include with this, but I, I really didn't want to throw anything out you uh, last minute, but absolutely. Well, we'll come with some kind of breakfast and dessert. Fabulous ideas. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Well, everyone, thank you so very much for joining us tonight. Again, a really big thank you to Sally and Brittany. Uh, for continuing to put these events on, especially as it is more difficult to meet face to face. I'm so happy to see this community grow and really look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thanks again. Thank you so, so much. We appreciate you and your talents and your, as Linda said, you're just delightful to, to you. watch you. Thank too. you. So Love you guys. I appreciate it. Love you. Love you. Bye bye. Have a great night, bye. everyone. Good night, everyone. Bye, Linda. Take care. Good night.